Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to present my top 10 free Windows utilities. These are those small programs that often help me out when I'm working in Windows, so let's go and see what's on my list. First up we have Recover, which is a utility for recovering deleted or otherwise lost files. And you can download this from the C Cleaner website, and of course links to all of the utilities covered here are in the video description. Now, when you've downloaded Recover, you'll run up its installer, and I just want you to point out that in the installer, you may wish to uncheck the box that also installs C Cleaner, and you may wish to go into Customize and to uncheck some options here. So for example, personally, I don't want Recover integrated into my Recycle Bin or my Explorer menus, and I don't want automatic updates. Now, to demonstrate how Recover works, I've inserted a flash drive, and if we look at the flash drive's contents here, you'll see the drive is empty. But if we go to Recover and we pick up that drive, which is down there, and we press on Scan, you will see it comes up with a whole list of files which have been deleted from the drive, which can be recovered. And indeed, if we click on the file, you can see we can get a preview of it in the window there. And if we click on the info box, it tells us it's next in condition, it can be recovered. So say, for example, I want to recover those three files, I could click on there, click on Recover. It'll ask me where to recover to, which ideally should be a different drive, but here I'm going to use the same flash drive just because I want to. It won't like that very much. We'll say OK, and yes, we will do that. And it'll do the process, OK, and then hopefully you can see down here the files have come back. So there we are, Recover, a great utility for getting back deleted or otherwise lost files. Next on my list is a fantastic image viewer for Windows called IrfanView, which you can get from irfanview.com. And if you scroll down on the main page, you'll see you've got a choice of either 32 or 64-bit versions. If in doubt, if you're not sure what you need for your computer, use the 32-bit version. Now, here I've got the software running, showing an image, and it's just looking at a folder, and we can go back and forth in this folder, pressing the arrows, or I can use the keyboard, see different images. If I press enter, it'll go to full screen. I can continue flicking through. And if I press uh, enter again, it gets me back to a normal view like that, full view back again. It's little touches like that that make this, I think, really nice as a piece of software. And if you want, you can do a little bit of image editing in this package. If I just show you the menus, you'll see there's a lot of uh, options available here for working on the image, doing basic things with it, even things like doing, a, say, red eye reduction for your photos there. But the thing I really like about this package is how flexible it is. You can choose exactly how it works in all circumstances. You're in complete control of viewing your images in Windows using this package, which is not something you can say when you're using one of the standard Windows image viewers. So there we are. That's IrfanView, my favorite package for viewing images in Windows. Next on my list, we have the very popular utility, VLC Media Player, which is an open source media player which can play all kinds of different media formats. And you can get this from videolan.org. Now it's worth pointing out when you click on the download link, you're taken to a download page where you often see adverts and these might confuse you by, you might think, for example, here, that's the download link. It isn't. When you get to this page, just wait, the file will come up, you can download the file and install the player. So to be careful you don't install something you didn't intend to on the videoland.org website. Now, I've got VLC Media Player running here, and there's not a great deal to say about it other than the fact it's a great media player for lots of different media formats. Here I've got it loaded with uh, the Explaining Computers intro, which is a play very nicely. We could uh, full screen that if we wanted to. There we are, all running very well. Let's take it back to a standard view. And the main thing I would stress here again is that VLC Media Player plays lots of different media formats. So I like to have it installed on a Windows PC just in case there's a piece of video I can't play with any other piece of Windows software. Next on my list, we have Angry IP Scanner from angryip.org, which is a scanner to find the IP addresses, the internet protocol addresses of all the computers or the devices on your network. So this can be handy, for example, if you're setting up a NAS device. And I point out if you go to download here, there are various versions available. 
And uh, the critical thing is I actually use the legacy version, which is the oldest version of Angular IP Scanner. I download this file here, because you can run that file without doing any installs at all. You don't have to install Java and the other things you need for the, the other versions. But whatever version you use, you'll end up with a program which will scan your network. So this is set up to scan my network here. Here is an Angular IP Scanner. If I click on Start here, you'll see it'll run on through, find all the devices on my network. And uh, there they are. Oh, you can see my Odroid HC1 NAS has just come up there. And uh, it's now told me that scanning is now finished. So uh, there we are. That is Angular IP Scanner, a handy utility for locating the computers on your network. Moving from a fairly technical utility to one I use entirely for leisure purposes, we come to MP3 Tag, which you can download from mp3tag.de. And as I'm sure you can guess, this is a utility to allow you to edit the metadata of the tags of MP3 files and indeed other audio files. So if we have a look at this package, it's very straightforward to use, very nicely presented. I like to keep all of my music in MP3 format. I like to buy it from Amazon or rip it from my CD collection, things like that. And this package just allows me to edit all the tags and change things around and keep good control of it. I don't want to have my music controlled by some sort of service like iTunes or something like that. I like to have control myself and MP3 tag allows me to do that. Next on my list, we have the free edition of the Drive Imaging and Cloning software, Macrium Reflect, which you can download from macrium.com forward slash reflect free. Now, this is great software to use if you want to, for example, migrate your operating system from one drive to another, or to create or maintain backups. And if we look at the package itself, here it is. So if we wanted, for example, to clone this drive, we could click on the drive and click clone this disk. I'm not going to do that now. I don't want to mess anything up on this PC. But uh, recently on the channel, I did a video called Drive Cloning and Imaging, where I showed you how to create clones and images and work with them in Macro and Reflect. So if you want to know more about this package, look back to that video. Next on my list of the top 10 free Windows utilities is SD Memory Card Formatter, which is made available by the SD Association, who actually provide all the standards in the world for SD memory cards. And you can download this from the sdcard.org website, which is the SD Association website. And you might be thinking to yourself, why do you need a special utility like the one you can download here for formatting SD memory cards? Can't you just format them in Windows? Well, you can, but uh, it's best to use the official formatter if you're having problems with a card, or if a card, for example, has been corrupted, or maybe you've been using it on another system, another operating system, and you need to get it back to a good state. So here, if we look at the software, here's the software itself. Very small little package comes up, not a lot of controls we have here. And here I've got a window showing us a, a plugged in a micro SD card, which is coming up as three drives. It's been used on a, a Linux system, and therefore it might not be in a state Windows can deal with it perfectly. So if you want to get it back to a standard state, if you use the SD memory card formatters software here, we'll give it to a volume label. Um, can't think, we'll call it hello for once. Uh, and we can simply press format. Do we want to format the card? Yes, we do. This is very simple software to use. And there we are, we've now formatted the card and Windows is now happy with it. So uh, you might think this is a slightly strange thing to have on the list, but if you use SD cards a lot, I can assure you if you always format your cards with SD card formatter, you'll have far fewer issues with corrupted or otherwise malfunctioning cards. Well, Things now getting very exciting because we've reached the top three. And third on my list is Etcher, which is a utility I've used many times before on this channel because it's used to write operating system images to SD cards and USB drives and other flash media, as indeed it says on the screen right here. And Etcher is now available from belena.io forward slash Etcher. So if we look at the package itself, we'll have got it running, I think, uh, just down there. And the thing I really like about Etcher is it makes the whole process very straightforward to uh, get your image written to your, your micro SD card or the flash media. So you just select your image. So here, for example, I take this image, which is one for a, a ROC64 a single board computer. And as you can see, this is a compressed file. It's an XZ file. And that's one of the great things about Etcher. You don't have to decompress any files you've downloaded before you actually use them in the program. It'll do all that for you. 
We then just, just select our SD card. This is the one we've just formatted up with the SD card formatter. Always a good idea to format your cards with SD card formatter before using Etcher, prevent any possible errors. And then all we have to do is to click on Flash and to tell Windows everything's okay and Etcher will get on with writing the image to the SD card. So there we are. Number three on my list of the top three Windows utilities is Etcher, a great utility for writing images to Flash Media. Well, we've now reached my penultimate entry, which is NoteTab Lite, which is a free text editing utility, effectively a replacement for Notepad in Windows, but far more sophisticated. And you can get this from the website at notetab.com. Now, if you go to download, you will see that there are various versions available. There is a paid version for which there is a free trial. But if you want to get NoteTab Lite, which is the free version, you want to download, of course, NoteTab Lite. So if I bring up the uh, package itself, which is running uh, down here, you can immediately see why it's called NoteTab, because I've got lots and lots of different text files open here in different tabs so I can move between them. You don't have to stack them like this. I've chosen to do that. And it's worth pointing out this package is highly configurable. Like many of the other utilities here, you can decide exactly how you want to use it. I've, for example, chosen the, the font here I'm looking at on screen, just because I find it easiest to work with the font of that particular size. And you'll also see you can use libraries. You can pick your libraries from down there, or you can pick them from um, the uh, library bar down there. But you can turn all this on and off if you want to. Everything here is under your control. So there we are. My second favorite free Windows utility is the text editor, NoteTab Lite. So you're now probably asking, what is my top free Windows utility? And the answer is Veracrypt, which is a piece of encryption software which allows you to create virtual encrypted disks, virtual encrypted drives on your computer, on a USB drive you might carry with you, things like that. So it's software for keeping your data safe. And you can get it from agrocrypt.fr. And it's worth noting it's based on some earlier and highly popular encryption software called TrueCrypt, as it tells us down here. TrueCrypt is uh, no longer with us in software terms, so we've moved on to other things like Veracrypt. Now, I did make a video called Veracrypt Encrypted USB Drive a few years ago, which goes into Veracrypt in depth. But I will show you the basic operation of the utility here. And to do that, I plugged in another flash drive. Now, if I open up at this PC, we'll see the flash drive is here. This is a flash drive I carry around in my pocket to keep all my files with me of working projects. And uh, it uses Veracrypt for encryption. So I'll open it up. And I use Veracrypt here in what's called portable mode. So I run the, the file from the drive itself. Yes, we know we want to do that. And we now have to pick a drive. It's actually picked it already. But we basically pick up a Veracrypt container, which is uh, that one there, my videos container. Open that up and we press mount, and I have to enter my uh, password, and uh, enter. It'll now wait for a little second. And uh, there we are, the drive is now mounted. And indeed, if we just push that down there, we can look back in uh, Windows, and there it is, look, we've got a virtual drive on the system drive S, which has got lots of backup files in. Uh, ironically, it's got backups of this very video, which is, of course, yet to be completed. You can see I'm already carrying around uh, parts of this video in my pocket. So I could access these files, I could add to that drive, take things away, and then when I was finished, all I'd have to do is to get a Veracrypt back again, and I could dismount the drive, and uh, it would dismount things, I could eject the USB drive, and all would be good. So there we are. My top 10 free Windows utility is Veracrypt. So there we have it, the top 10 free Windows utilities that I personally find most useful. However, there are of course lots of other free Windows utilities out there, so if you know of one you find particularly useful, do let us all know about it down in the comments section. Also, if you're looking for free Windows software, you might like to look at my video of the top 10 free Windows applications that looks at free Windows applications programs, and also my video, the top seven free video editors. Finally, I just want to say here, if you are downloading free software for Windows or indeed for any other platform, do take care. Do make sure you only download programs from legitimate links. I've given you links down in, in the video description, and those are the ones I use. As far as I'm aware, they are legitimate. They don't contain malware, things like that. But do keep your wits about you when you're downloading free software and installing it on your computer. 
But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you see there, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.